There's just so much to love about the beach, isn't there? The sound of the waves crashing against the shore, the feeling of the sand beneath your toes. But for me, it's the sense of smell that really takes me straight back to those great childhood memories. What is it about the sense of smell that's just so powerful? For many of us, every day begins with a cup of strong, freshly ground coffee. And there's something that's always bugged me. Isn't it funny how some tastes and smells just don't match up? Coffee's an example, and cheese, if it tasted like it smelled, you wouldn't need it. Turns out, even though taste and smell are closely linked, they're both very different senses. You don't really get a strong sense of flavour just from stimulating your taste buds. It really have to you recruit your olfactory or smell centre to get that strong flavour. The, the olfactory system, being one of those primitive parts of our human body, actually has over a thousand genes dedicated to olfactory receptors. It's an amazing amount of genetic information. I'm catching up with perfumer Sally Woodward Hawes, who's designing a scent just for me. So this is basically the process that all those celebrities that have their own perfume, this is what they do. Yes. They'd sit with someone like yeah. you, a professional, yes. Yes. and say a little bit more of this, a little bit less of that. Yes, yeah. This is exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Creating perfumes is an interesting art form because it triggers emotional responses differently to music or visual mediums. You know, a lot of people want to create a fragrance for all different reasons, but I find 90% of their reasons are emotional reasons. In fact, it's the reason Sally got into the business in the first place. My mother passed away when I was 17, and it wasn't until maybe three or four years later that I opened up her cosmetics box that she had, and inside were about three or four bottles of perfume. And that was literally like, I smelt these fragrances and it was like she was right there. And I just thought, this is what I want to do with my life. Is it true that smell has a greater link to memory than any other sense? You know, there is. There's good evidence that your smell centre is linked to parts of a very primitive component of your brain called the limbic system. And so therefore, we believe the limbic system has um, pathways that link into the temporal lobe, which is where our memories are, and it stimulates these phenomena of uh, recollection and uh, uh, reminiscence of previous events. Getting to know your nose is a fascinating experience. It's not pleasant. Dr Raquel Alvarado from the Sydney ENT Clinic works with Professor Harvey to analyse patients' olfactory systems. Peppermint. I'm being blind tested with a series of well-known aromas. So How did I go? Out of the 16, you were able to identify them all except for two. Oh, really? Yeah. My sense of smell is working pretty well. But when Dr Alvarado tests my sense of taste, well, let's just say maybe I should have cut down on the spicy foods. Like, it just tastes like paper. Okay. Once again, I'm reminded that the enjoyment of food is determined by smell far more than taste. Is it possible to train your sense of smell to become better? I believe it to be absolutely true because we actually have clinical data to show that people who've had impaired or injured olfactory systems can actually improve it by undergoing olfactory retraining. And finally, if you're in any doubt about the power of our nose to warn us of impending danger, there is another element to our sense of smell that can't be ignored. One significant phenomenon that does exist in our community is that smell loss can precede some forms of degenerative brain disease, such as Alzheimer's and dementia. And the typical ages here are often younger than you think, in the 50s or 60s. And if it's associated with significant memory loss, loss of other cognitive abilities, there are investigations you can have to see whether or not you might be at risk as someone uh, with early degenerative brain changes, such as Alzheimer's or dementia.